Well, good morning. Welcome to Your Real, Your Ideal. How are you doing today, Sandy? Amy, good morning. Wonderful. The sun is shining. Um, books are abundant. Leaves are falling. And I'm seeing in different parts of the country, I'm seeing all the posts from Omaha that the trees are beautiful. And we're a little, we're a little earlier here, but we still have a lot of fall beauty. So it's well. Wonderful. So that note, last week we were celebrating fall flannel fun. Right. Right. We had, it was a beautiful fall day today in Omaha. The wind has hit yesterday and today the leaves are gone okay. and we have flurries this morning. So really? I've had now we're already. into winter. <laughs> now into winter and thus you have, you've got your turtleneck on. I've got on my... My theme for the weekend is read, 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 read my sweatshirt. So read, read, read. I love it. That sounds like a fun weekend. Yep. Yes. Yeah. So, but starting the weekend with our discussion, which is always uh, a go-to look forward for me. And uh, I like it because you can just show up and think and talk. And I love our conversations and ours is kind Um, of an add on from last week. So it is last week we talked about words matter. And we were talking about compliments and, and how it makes you feel and how you handle compliments and, and, um, the the reason they resonate with us and and the importance. Yes. Um, so today we're going to talk about words that don't matter. (laughs) We're going the opposite and how, um, sometimes words are said and I know I've done this. Like I was doing the research. I'm like, oh yeah, like sometimes in the heat of the moment, you say something that you shouldn't have said like, Oh, I didn't really mean that. I was just in the heat of the moment, maybe lashing out or, you know, have you ever done that? Totally. And (laughs) what gets me is uh, just like we talked about compliments and about how heartwarming it was to hear someone say, I'm holding so true this compliment you gave to me that we didn't think was that big of a deal. Well, the same holds true with words. I've had it happen where people have shared with me words that I said that they took very negatively, or I lashed out and I said them negatively that they've held on to for years. And the back to words matter. Well, words, these are words that don't matter, but are impactful. So it's trying to unhinge the negative that comes with them. But Amy guilty as charged right here. Yeah. I've had the same. Thought factor. Yeah. And I, uh, I think stick with me when I get called out in the moment for being mean, I like, I remember something I said to my mom when I was a snarky teenager and she called me out on it when I said it. And that has stuck with me for 35 years. You know what I mean? Like, it still is like, oh my gosh, I was so mean. I can't believe I said that, you know? Um, so does it, do they stick with you too? When, right. when you know, you've said something and somebody calls you out on it, it's like the, they totally stick with me. And it's the calling out of, on it because there have been times they have been intentional, bad words. I'm in a bad place. I mean, I could give you every excuse in the world, but I have been a mean person and I have said mean things. Uh I would tell you, and maybe this is wishful thinking. I think a majority of the time that I've said bad things or had negative words that have negatively impacted other people, it was not intentional. Or Uh in my case, I thought I was being funny. Because funny back with, you know, back to my value of fun, I funny, I like funny and my brothers are really funny and we like to do funny. We like to give each other a lot of shit and it's just, it is our language. I'd say if I have a love, love language with my siblings, it's who can give each other the most shit and then how hard can we laugh when we're together? That really is our our sibling love language. But sometimes when you're trying to be funny, you can be really mean or you can be funny at somebody's expense. And the example, when you said snarky teenager, um, what sticks with me is the senior profile, small town. And what I found is not everybody knows what this is. The paper would publish a column for the high school 
and the journalism students would always profile a senior in each weekly edition of the newspaper. And it probably worked out well because our class sizes were around 50. So, you know, you could get a weekly, sometimes there'd be more than one in there, but in my profile, they, you know, they, for the senior profile, the questions were things like, what was your favorite class? What are you going to do after high school? What's your most memorable moment? And one of them was, what is your favorite food? And my mother had gone back to work when I was in junior high and we had a family running joke that's so much for all the meals, you know, now we're doing TV dinners and things. And I had named as one of my favorite foods, my mom's jello and boiled eggs. And it was being snarky to her. Right. And I thought I was being funny because we like to tease her about that. And she read that in the paper and her face dropped and she looked at me and she said, that really hurts my feelings. I have cooked for you kids. I have made, I have recipes. I have done all this my entire life. And you put in the paper, my jello and boiled eggs. And I'll never forget that. I'm like, right. what a little bitch was I, but I thought I was being funny. And so right. I was picturing the response of my brothers, ha ha, laugh, laugh. When I just announced the whole town that my mother didn't cook. Oh my God, right. I'm going to go to hell. I'm going to apologize for her again today. <laughs> Call her and say, oh, you know what? I think we've all had those moments because that's exactly when I was being snarky to my mom. I thought I was being funny and it hurt her feelings. And she told me, she's like, you know what? That really just hurt my feelings that you said that. And it was a casual, like, I just thought I was being funny, you know, and it wasn't funny. The key is that they called us out on it yeah. because I think it stopped me in my tracks from doing similar things later to people, I would think before I said something like, like what does that hurt their feelings? I think it helped me to not yeah. be such a snark monster. And the key to this conversation too, is calling people out on these words and not just festering in them. I think, yes. you know, back to not to, as I was thinking about our content coming into this, just like giving compliments and noting and telling people when you're, you're authentically seeing things that are real, there's no authenticity in saying something mean other than you have your own issues. If it, it's very, if it is of poor intent, right. But having the courage to call people on it rather than festering on it, because we do fester on things. Some people fester on things for years. Right. Right. Um, and some people, are doing it unintentionally. And then some people are doing it intentionally. That is like so there, you know, and I think the people that it, the feedback resonates with are the people who are doing it unintentionally. They're not meaning to be mean, but it's coming across as mean. Um, the people that are doing it intentionally are like, yeah, that's exactly what I said. <laughs> you know, they're like, they have, it doesn't, um, doesn't bother them. You do have to, you do have to, uh, look at it that way, intentional versus unintentional. I always think that's the first start when somebody does say something, when you do receive bad words, because how you deal with them are in different ways. Because if they're intentional, it's a little deeper. It's not you, it's about them. It really is, but you have to protect right. yourself. And when it's unintentional, you have to be authentic in like my, my mom, your mom saying that hurt my feelings. And whether you meant to, didn't mean to, you think they're overreacting. It doesn't matter because if you care about them, you do care that you hurt their feelings. No matter if you, it's not whether they were correct or incorrect in how they took it, their feelings are their feelings. And you need right. to honor that. I think that's important. Okay. We froze up for a second. We did, but we can cut that little thing out. Right. I was, I thought you were okay. really having a nice pregnant pause there. You know. <laughs> <laughs> or I said something to hurt your feelings. <laughs> okay. Do you want to repeat that thought so that I can about honoring that or. I... You really need to honor if, if you know that somebody was not intentional. No, that's not what I said. What did I say? I said that I don't know. if you heard words that were. Oh, I know Garrett and I. So one thing about feelings is Garrett and I always have a saying that if you feel it, say it. And what that does is it sets the, 
that sets the boundary at it's not who's right and wrong. It's not that your feelings were incorrect. You responded in a bad way. It sets the standard of we care about each other's feelings and they matter no matter what. So honoring somebody's feelings, whether you think they overreacted, they took them wrong, don't go there. Just honor their feelings. And when mom says that hurt my feelings, you need to respond to that and not say it shouldn't have hurt your feelings. Well, you overreact. It's not about them. Their feelings are their feelings. Honor them. Right. I think that's such an important part of getting feedback and not being a mean person because when you accept that you hurt somebody, it's not about how they received it. It's about the words that you said and whatever you did, you can fix it. Like maybe you can say it a different way so that it's received better next time. And then it doesn't hurt them as much. Um, anyway, so one of the things I, I did some research, you know, me, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to be a better person because of your research. I always am. So I'm ready. I want it. So it was a little hard to do research on this because I, I started doing research on words that don't matter, you know, and then it's like, um, I can't remember all the things I came up with, but things, it didn't work. It didn't give me any kind of search that I was looking for, but what I ended up stumbling upon that led me down a road is, um, why people are mean, why, why people say mean things mm -hmm. was one of them. And then six ways to not take things personally was another I article. Both sides. Right. And then, um, a little bit about building resilience because that's a part of it also is being as the receiver, how do you think, take things not personally and how do you build resilience on that? Mm -hmm. Those are really good. I love, I, I love all of those in concept. And I especially overall love the idea and the advice to others and to our listeners on having active ways to not let negative comments or bad words use up your, <laughs> your precious time. Because if there's one thing I notice is people will let these things stick with them. They'll vent about them. They'll fret up for sometimes for years, sometimes for months. So you can't control what other people say, but you can control how you respond if you walk away back to those same core things and, and taking things personally is something I am horrible at because I do take a lot of things personally. So uh, I'm very interested in some of their tips on not taking things personally because it sucks time out of me and brain energy. And um, yeah, it's, it's not an easy thing for me. That one's probably the hardest thing for me to conquer is not to take the bad words personally. I'm probably better at moving on. Um, yeah. but they cut me a little deeper than they'd cut Garrett. He's just like, whatever it, he can move on from, he doesn't really care, you know, and I take right. them much more personally than he does. Yeah. I think, uh, there's a lot of people like that <laughs> on both sides. You know, we all take things differently. I'm more like you. I take things pretty personal and I take things, um, even when I know it's not intentional, but it makes me feel yucky inside. It's like, all right, I know they didn't do that intentionally, but it, it still makes me feel yucky. It's like, what do I do with that? So how to take things, not personally, one of the things is consider the source. You know, we all know that, um, that some people it's going to resonate more with us. Like the people that are close to us, like our moms giving us feedback that resonates mm -hmm. like, and, you know, maybe a coworker many years ago said something to me and I don't even remember what they said. Right. Cause it didn't stick didn't with matter. me. Right. It didn't matter. Because it, the, the source. Uh, I have a, an example of recent, we had a neighborhood party and I'm really uh, applauding one of my neighbors for just and being courageous by saying something and ending the conversation, I had left and later I had coffee with her and she said, you know, you, were you there still when there was the comment made, I won't repeat the comment, but there was a comment made 
by, by neighbor to her. And it was meant to be funny. And it wasn't that funny. And, you know, people were drinking wine. And when she got right. home, they had to leave, they left a little early and the neighbor had sent her a text saying you left early. And she was very gracious. She told her husband about it, which I think is a good uh, practice before she, she didn't launch back a text. She didn't do the silent treatment. She didn't text me, which is very typical, text somebody else or tell somebody else, I'm not going to talk to her again because she said that horrible thing. She's not my, you know, whatever. Instead, she told her husband, he said, you're probably taking it a little personally, but it's bothered you. So you, sh you should make her aware, you know, you should make her aware of what she said, but be kind about it. Don't be mad. And I loved it. She sent a text back that night and said, thank you so much for everything. But I wanted to let you know this comment you said to me really hurt my feelings. And I just wanted to let you know that. And the lady apologized, but then the next day she came over and she said, number one, I was drunk. That's not an excuse. I'm just telling you, it's good for yeah. me to know not to drink too much because you think you're funny. I don't even remember saying it. I'm quite frankly, I don't even know what it means. And they talked about whatever the comment was, they looked it up and, and she said, I must've repeated something, but I am so sorry. And I'm so glad you called me on it because it's a good reality check for me about, you know, words matter. And that's nobody's, we'll never speak of it again. Nobody. She shared it with me and I'm like, you are so courageous for doing that. And I loved her steps. The words hurt her feelings. She ran it by her husband. So rather than having an emotional reaction to it, and he parted down a little bit and, you know, basically said, I bet she probably didn't mean to, but you need to say something. Right. And look at that 24 hours done, done. And everybody walked away fine. Right. And it was good. And, and it was good. And that doesn't happen that often. That's the sad part. I think right. I don't, I hear the other part, people talking about these events that happen for months, years after, and there's this, you know, elephant in the room between people because they've never had a conversation about it. Right. And you think about that on both sides, you know, the situation, the person giving, saying whatever she said, she was in the moment. She was maybe trying to be funny. I don't know. She was drinking, you know, and so that kind of lets down the guard. And so this thing was said, the other person received it and was hurt by it, but she took it and, and said something about it because it probably, there's probably some piece of that that struck her to the core. And typically it's like something really close and personal to us. Like your mom with the cooking, like I've been cooking for you for years. And this is the one thing that you put out there you know, and, right. or, um, it, you know, just, it could be anything, but she handled it. She said something, she got, she gave feedback and it like all resolved itself because of that. And she learned not to take it personally because in actuality, she, through the authenticity of the, uh, apology, she really knew that it really wasn't toward her. It wasn't what, it, what this comment wasn't about her, but back to taking things personally, sometimes you have to inquire and ask because you make it into a much bigger thing than it is, right? Yeah, you make totally. it. So one, one thing question for you, Amy, we're talking about when we're the direct recipient or we're the one giving the words. What if you're the one observing somebody, you're observing words you know, words that don't matter, but they really do because they're impacting someone. And, and sometimes they can be soft words too. And the example I'll mm -hmm. give is my counselor, when I was going through my divorce, called me on something that I had no idea I was doing. He said, your use of pronouns is really degrading to your husband. They've got to be, you call your kids, your kids, mine, uh, mine. He said, watch your use of pronouns. They're his kids too. Amy, I had no idea. Do you know that I noticed that with other people? They'll make a post on Facebook. Oh, my this, my Lillian, my, my, my. And I'm thinking, you know, there's another party to this. And that's just one example. <laughs> so my, my point is, it was so well, I had no idea. And after I thought about it, I thought, you know, that really is sending a strong message that I'm the one, they're my kids. And he observed it as a counselor. 
Okay. So now I'm observing it from the outside and I observe other things like people that finish other people's sentences, or they're saying things that they think they're funny and they're really being mean. And I can sense the hurt feelings. I would tell you that most times I don't say anything. I silently watch, or maybe I'll say to the person, you know, I don't think she means it, but I don't say anything to the giver that often. So I'd be curious your thoughts and how you handle that. And do you call people on it when you observe? Um, I, it it depends on the person. I'll say that. How about that? Because if, I saw one of my kids saying something to another one of my kids and um, I would ask the receiver and see how they were doing with it. And if it was okay received, if it wasn't well received, um, and then I, I would probably say something to my other child because I think that's my job as their parent to kind of guide them. And when they could be hurting other people's feelings, you know what I mean? Right. Like that's, that's like our job now going the into ones, the observer yeah. to the people that you just happen to be a third party. Well, so there's this, this middle group of people that, uh, I don't know. It depends on the situation. Um, I will tell you though, with strangers, I'm probably more likely to call it out. So if I I saw something like at the grocery store and somebody said something not nice to somebody, I would probably say, you know what? That's not very nice. They're, they, they got this or whatever. You know what I mean? So strangers, it's very easy Mm -hmm. (laughs) and probably because I know I can say something, I can walk away and I'm not entwined in anything. Right. That makes a lot of sense. And it's good to call people out because hopefully they're not going to repeat that action. They're going to think about it, you know, back to the reaction and somebody saying something to you, whether they're having a bad day and maybe they're not even realizing that they're being completely unkind, you know, impulsive. There's a lot of impulse. There's a lot of impulsive impulsiveness that we all need to control because that's when bad things come out too, is when we're not completely right. Which is something I have to work on. Oh my gosh. I think everybody. (laughs) So one of the things that, um, said in this research, um, question your own perfectionism. And I thought this was interesting. There's a straight line between hypersensitivity and perfectionism. Individuals who take things personally often work really hard to be blameless, flawless, and excellent precisely so no one will criticize them wow i know i read that and i was like wow so that's really interesting because i do take things personally but i know i'm not perfect right (laughs) so if it's a good feedback i'll take it and i'll try to change right no which is exactly right nick you know this try to change getting the feedback and getting it from the right people. So there's a, it's interesting because I thought through, I could think through with my kids, they've shared with me, you know, what, what words that were very negative that stay with them. And just like compliments, they come to the top of the list of what, what people have said to them that were very negative. You know, we all hear the stories about the teacher that says, Oh, you're, you're not college material. You'll, you'll be nothing. And usually maybe it's those formative years and back to maturity that it sticks with us. But tying into what you just said in affirmations, my story of words that have stuck with me, um, the, the one that came top of mind was when I was in high school, you know, I did really well in school. I was second in my class. You know, again, there were 44 people, but I was salutatorian, <laughs> but get this. And I went to a Catholic school and the nun that was in charge of uh, national, the teacher that was in charge of national honor society was a nun. And I wasn't inducted into the national honor society. And I asked her because I think my friends had encouraged me because it's like, how can I not be a national honor society? I mean, I'm second in the class. I do very well. And she said, I don't think you have honorable traits. You hang out with people that I know do things and go to parties. And she made an assumption about me. How would she know? She wasn't at any parties, but she made an assumption Mm -hmm. that I did. I was not honorable enough for national honor society. 
And those words stuck with me. But the interesting part tying back into what's real, what's not real with that. I had other circumstances with my parents where I got into trouble that they said, you know what, you deserve it. Right. And they're with this, they, they let the national honor society go. I told them that they told me they didn't believe that, you know, that she just didn't take the time to know, or she basically was running to judgment or she, that it was, it was her deal. Not my deal is basically what they said. But the interesting part was then she, for two classes that I had her for, even though I got all A's in the two classes, she gave me C's. And when I asked her, she said, it's because of your lack of participation. I knocked you down because you didn't participate. And I told, I came home crying because that would have knocked me. I wouldn't have been second in my class. And it was on purpose. I mean, I have no idea why she didn't like me. Maybe I reminded her of a sister that was mean to her. I have no idea. And that's part of this too. You don't know why don't people know. do these things. So I was not honorable. I was not good. My parents marched straight up to school and they had never done that in my lifetime. And they went to bat for me. And then I had to go and have a conversation and the grades ended up reflecting what I did and not not for participation. And it all ended up fine, but it was their validation that it was not, you know, that, that the words were not real. And they haven't stuck with me that I don't think I'm an honorable person. They've what stuck with me is my probably more so how I responded to it and how my parents responded to it with me. It's the whole, the whole response part stuck with me. And it also stuck with me when I have done things wrong to think through, okay, is it deserving or not? The whole process was because my parents didn't just respond to my tears and my, she did this. I got interrogated. I had to prove it. I had to show it. I, you know, I had to go through every step of what happened before they marched up to school. It wasn't just Sandy crying, bail me out. And that will stay with me forever. That's a great story about resilience, about standing up for yourself, about your parents rallying behind you and saying, you know what? this is wrong. These words are wrong. This, these assumptions are wrong. We need to stand up for her. And what you said in this story was, um, I don't know why she was doing this, which is something that we have to just always leave a question mark out there of, you don't know what is bringing that person to that place to do the mean thing that they're doing. Um, we don't know, you know, if she had someone like you, who you remind her of that, you know, the mean sister or a a mean friend or not friend in high school, whatever it is, something's brought her to this point Mm -hmm. where she's holding something against you and you just don't know what that is. And you have to stand up for yourself. And, and sometimes also to that point, you have to take it personally, like, okay, she's done this to me. I'm taking this personally and I'm going to stand up for myself. Can I tell you the funny ending to that story? Yeah. So the funny ending to that story is fast forward. Um, I thought through like as a young adult, even having children, I'm going to meet her in the street when I'm (laughs) back and I'm going to tell her, you know, how successful I am. Like, oh, I just, I, I want to tell her and how her words her because she used to brag about how all the students came back and loved her. And I'm going to be the one I'm going to tell her. And fast it. forward to about eight years ago, I wrote a blog and funny how this all comes full circle. The blog is about taking compliments. And I was uh, the lead in the fall play at school. And this same sister came up to me and said, you did a really good job. And instead of saying, thank you, I started blurting out, oh, I really didn't. And they were better. And I screwed this up and there was silence. And she said, sometimes Sandy, you just need to say thank you. That was the premise of the whole blog story. And I got an email from the email address that was on my blog from a niece that said that she, she died at very, at a very old age and that they were searching her name for things for, you know, knowing she was going to die any day. And they found my blog story and they read it to her. And 
Yes. And they, oh. they, she, she could no longer talk or anything, but they thought it was such a lovely story and they read it to her. So the story was actually not negative on her. And isn't that an interesting full circle? But at this point in my life, I thought how lovely I actually feel much better about sharing. Cause it was a true story. The lovely story rather than the, she was a battle ax who, you know, it, it was a coincidence, but Amy, who could figure? And then I think through about, I just watched a documentary on Pink and she made the comment, it was a great documentary on Netflix that she always wanted to go back and tell all of her teachers, screw you, I'm so good. And then you actually get to that point and you're like, you don't care. You know, it's like, it's all good. And yeah, so she did good things too. How about that? Because her, her advice was good. And in her deathbed, she didn't get a nasty letter from me. Instead, she had my blog <laughs> read to her, which might've been even more painful for her since she didn't like me. I don't know. <laughs> well, the good thing is that you were able to um, still see the good aside from the, the hard things that had happened with her. So you were able to recognize both things happening, which I think that's how most relationships are. Like there's good and there's bad and everything. Maybe she didn't mean to keep me off of national letters. I <laughs> I, here's the thing. Let's be real. Maybe I said something really snarky and mean to another student that upset her. I mean, maybe she right. has a story about me, right? right. If you don't right. ask, that's the other thing about, we, we talk a lot here about communication and if you feel it, say it in a nice way, right? Conversations. How many things could be avoided by having a real conversation, but you have to get it from both sides to get the yeah. outcome. That's the hard being part. Being curious. Yeah. That I, you said this once before, being curious is key. And I think you're right because being curious brings understanding. And so asking the question, okay, why, why, why do you not like me? Why, did why I is do this some issue? What did I do? Did I, or did I do something or, you know, let's, let's create some communication. Now, granted you were a high schooler. So that's a, that's a, that's a big expectations for a high school. <laughs> we can kinda, say this. She was kind of scary. We, <laughs> she was a little scary. She had a lot of control over you yeah. as a high schooler, <laughs> or she had a lot of influence on, you know, what, what your grades could be and everything. So that's a lot, a lot of power, I would say. Okay. Um, so we are kind of at the end of our conversation. How are you feeling about this? You know, I'm feeling very empowered to take note of when I feel a negative comment and be a good communicator on it. So, yeah. you know, I, I like the, I like us bringing this all the way around because it's a good reminder for myself. And even when people vent to me to first, rather than go to, oh, wow, that's terrible feeding into it to go to being curious and asking questions. And if they don't know the answer to encourage them to ask the question so they can unwind this in a good way and not yeah. let it be baggage and, and yeah, maybe yeah. find out that somebody didn't have a pure impure intent because you don't know. So I'm going to yeah. be a better listener and not just hear the negatives and instead, uh, be curious, be honor their feelings but encourage them if it's really bothering them to dig deeper and ask questions and throw it back at the person. If it's, if that is, uh, if it's applicable. Yeah, I think that's great. And I think as always keep in mind, you just don't know what people are going through right. on both sides of the conversation, the, the giver and the receiver. And so let's just be kind. Let's be kind. I like just, that. just be kind. Be All kind. right. So challenge for the week. Do we, um, have anything I like? And just so the, everyone knows the listeners know, we kind of like to have the conversation because we don't know where it's going to go. And that's why we wait for the challenge question, because sometimes what we throw out as a topic takes a few different turns. So, yes. um, you know, I, I, I think a good challenge is to find a situation this week where somebody is sharing with you where they receive some bad words or have some bad feelings and be that good listener, that kind person that helps them dissect it in a productive way and push them to do the right thing and not just, oh, that's terrible or, you know, the easy way out, which is to just affirm feelings without knowing all the answers. I mean, it happens all the time. 
right? I think that that's happens. a great challenge to give someone some clarity of what they've actually received and what they're doing with that information. And, you know, it's great to have a third party for that too. Cause oh I gosh. tell you, we could apply yeah. this to ourselves. I talk about like the counselor and the pronouns. I am so much more careful with anything, you know, about who I think about my words, you know, give getting advice on use of words that are totally pure of motive, but can come off negatively. Um, and hearing it from someone else and getting some coaching on this, because sometimes when you're burdened with with feelings and hurt feelings, it's hard to really sift through all of it without somebody at your side to help you do that. Like my, my neighbor's husband. So be yeah. that person, be that person. All right. Great challenge. All right. Well, until next week. Until next week. Thank you, Sandy. Great conversation bye. as always. And we'll talk later. All right. Bye. Bye.